Welcome to The Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello. It's great to be with you. Today, we're continuing our monthly series that centers around the phrase of I'm feeling. And this week's topic is I'm feeling numb. And so recently, I have had a few conversations with people who would describe how they are feeling as they feel numb. And that's not to say that they don't feel at all, but rather when asked about different aspects of their life, they feel numb. And I recently read a book by Katrina Ubel, and Katrina Ubel delves into the concept of using food as a means to cope with emotions. And she emphasizes the emotional eating being a common obstacle to achieving lasting weight loss. And Ubel explains that many individuals turn to food as a way to numb or distract themselves from uncomfortable emotions, such as stress, sadness, or boredom. However, she highlights that this behavior only provides temporary relief and often leads to overeating or making unhealthy food choices. And so I know that this is not a weight loss podcast, but I think the concepts are interesting to explore. Why do we feel numb? Is it a distraction? Is it a way to avoid uncomfortable emotions? Or is numbing a placeholder until we have time to deal with a certain emotion? Are there other things that come to mind when we think about feeling numb? I know for me, when we were first discussing this topic, what immediately came to mind is going to the dentist and literally getting your gums numbed with Novocaine so that the dentist can either tend to a cavity or a root canal or whatnot. And so numbing serves a purpose, right? In order to get to a deeper cause of pain or a problem or a situation going on, you need to have that numbing in order to tend to that. And so I think that there is a place for for that. But I think what happens, and, and Chris, what you're describing is we do the numbing to then just check out without then doing the, to use the dentist analogy, it's like just putting Novocaine in your mouth for the point of that. But then you have a numb lip, but then nothing that's being addressed. That's the deeper problem going on. And gosh, I think this is huge. And I think to your point, there's lots of reasons why we do that. I think at at our best, maybe it's to have a placeholder because we're at work and we have to compartmentalize. And so we have to do that and tend to something later. I think that's probably not most of the cases. I think oftentimes we're just numbing because life is too much and too hard. Um, I was actually recently listening to a podcast. It was this lady who's done research on toxic achievement culture, this idea of never enough. And she was describing how it was with primarily high school and college age students that she was working with. And she said a lot of these high school students are feeling so much pressure. There's never enough, the grades that they get, the expectations of their parents to get into a good college and to succeed in sports or whatever extracurriculars that they're doing. And they said, we aren't turning to drugs or drinking because of peer pressure, which is maybe our parents' generation or what you think. It's because we're so overstressed and there's never enough that we can do that we literally just want to black out on the weekends and just to numb because that's the only way that we can escape all of those expectations. With which I, and, and the statistics were really like in her research, it was pretty extensive and really high stats that I don't have in front of me. But so I do think that there's that's a difference, right? It's not just the just say no peer pressure thing, but there's an actual desire to numb because there's so much. So I think what you're saying is hugely relevant. I think so, too, as both of you are talking. Um, I think the Novocaine one reminds me a little bit. Of, it causes me to ask a funny question, which is, what is the quality of your numbing? Which you wouldn't think you would ask that because if you say I'm feeling numb, that sounds like a negative. But to your point, sometimes there is a positive reason that we can feel maybe shame or disappointment that we are having this feeling. But in fact, there's like a need and the fact that we can recognize that there's a need. There's lots of positives. What is the quality of your numbing? (laughs) A funny question to ask, but it is meaningful. And I run into it even at the end of a day because so much energy has been expended that I can feel the need to not be who be that be expending that much and I need to stop I need to slow down and so then the question is what comes next so is it going to be I don't know whatever your favorite comfort food is for example or 
something that fuels your body. But it doesn't have to be food, right? It could be anything. Is it going to be something that just gets you through the night and you wake up still feeling depleted? Or is it going to be something that actually helps something to fill up within you and help you go into the next day again? I really appreciate what both of you guys are naming. I think a story that comes to my mind as well, just this past week, I've been having some tingling in my finger and my thumb. I don't want to know. I don't really want to know. I don't want to know if there's a deeper health issue going on. I just want to hope that maybe I'm sleeping on my arm and then throughout the day, my my thumb and finger and hand are going numb throughout different points of the day. But at some point, you're going to have to say, you know, there's something wrong, right? There's I can't just put off the numbness that is happening in my hand forever that isn't healthy. And so then, of course, go to Google and before you schedule a, a doctor's appointment and more than likely I have carpal tunnel. And I think one of the bigger reasons why I, I suppressed, I just didn't want to know is I'm a guitar player and it's my guitar hand. And I have a lot of fear around what would that mean if I can't feel when I'm playing the guitar? And so I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to delve into what could be causing that numbness in my hand. And so I think a lot of times we numb because of the fear of what it might mean for the future whenever we actually do get to the root cause of what's going on. Yeah, I think that's very relevant. Of I don't want to know. It's too much because the implications of that would mean further disappointment or pain or things that I would have to tend to. And so even going back to the story with the toxic expectations, the toxic achievement culture, right? The hard conversation with parents of, hey, I'm feeling this way and I feel like I come home with an A and it's never enough. And there's that what's the next or always pointing out the bad things. The uncomfortable conversation with the parent feels more uncomfortable than right? The numbing and and avoiding that sort of a thing. And I think this woman was trying to just highlight the importance of what does it look like to, again, not assume that something's going on too. You don't know. Maybe you have carpal tunnel. Maybe you are sleeping right. But it it begs the question of exploring a little bit deeper and taking that. And so again, that numbing being a sign of I'm numbing quite a bit and I can continue down this trajectory. And if I don't tend to it, even worse things are going to happen, or I can take a moment to tend to what's going on and recognize, okay, I may not like, this may be an uncomfortable conversation, or this may be an uncomfortable thing to admit to myself or whatever it is. Our primal brain, primary function is to avoid pain and to seek pleasure, right? Those are primary functions of the brain. And so that's our natural go-to. And so anything that's uncomfortable, it takes a lot of energy and, and purpose to do that, right? And so I think just piggybacking off of what you're saying, Chris, in that situation. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought the kids up again because it reminded me a little bit of this moment that I had in a contemplative group that I was a part of. That sense of, oh, it's never enough. Man, what a relatable feeling to feel like, oh, I don't get enough done in a day. I don't meet the mile markers that I want to meet. And maybe other people think I should be meeting (laughs) more than I am. Who even knows? But uh, we were sitting in this kind of contemplative space And the question was, if I'm remembering correctly, one of gratitude. So you wouldn't, a lot of times people are like, oh yeah, three things I'm happy for. But the pause was what helped me to realize that I had actually done quite a bit that day. So I'd walked into the meeting feeling that swirl of, oh, I'm not getting enough done. I'm not getting enough done. And then realizing I got a ton of stuff done today. It's just that there's a lot of lists over here, right? There's still so much more, but it's not that nothing's getting done. It was the pause. And I think, Chris, going back to like physical things, man, middle life, it's interesting. There's definitely feelings in my body that I don't address because, and I don't think I would have said the words, I don't want to know. I think I probably would have said, I don't want to deal. If there is a therapy that needs to happen to, and I hear this, we have a neighbor who's, it's really a funny dynamic. They're this retired couple and there's certain things that he needs to do for his neck, which I think is a result of an, an injury he got in the military, but he doesn't want to do the exercises. And so that quality of life is wherever it is because we don't want to deal. So there can be, I don't want to know. I don't want to deal. There can be all these different reasons that are causing us to try to subvert and go around, do something else. Yeah. And I think one of the things that comes to mind, I really appreciate what you said, Christina Kaiser. 
I know people that have back injuries. And so one of the highest priorities in our society is being able to function. And our bodies may be saying something to us and rest might be needed. A break might be needed. But that utilitarian pressure to keep doing things. So I know people that get shots in their back that are probably more painful than the back injury itself, just so they could continue to function. And I think the contemplative life is one that says, what is my body telling me? What is my life telling me in this moment? And you know, taking those pauses that you're saying to actually know what's needed. And I think people just need the freedom to say, I know there's all these pressures, but what is being offered to me right now in this moment? And I think our body has a lot to tell us. Our mind is telling us something different. Our fears are telling us something different. The expectations that we have on ourselves, or the expectations that other people have of us are communicating these things to us. But I think it's only in the act of contemplation that we can figure out what we need in, in the different seasons and moments of our lives. I find myself going back to your opening comments about the Katrina Ubell book that you read. And if we are feeling sad or bored, let's just use bored. If I'm feeling bored and I go eat a bowl of popcorn, I'm still going to feel bored. I just am now full from maybe I have a stomach ache too because I eat too much popcorn or chocolate or whatever it was. And so we're not addressing the boredom, which is interesting. And again, I think to your point earlier, Christina, there's maybe some like helpful types of numbing that we can do to address something else or just recognizing, well, like I just ate this whole bowl of popcorn. I actually wasn't even hungry. My, my need wasn't hunger. It was boredom and I'm still bored. Okay. Getting in touch with that. And again, I think sometimes I've noticed when there's an uncomfortable feeling, if I give it like a minute, maybe even a minute and a half, oftentimes it'll work its way through and move on and I can go on. Sometimes it doesn't. Maybe at the end of a week or at the end of a really stressful day, I need a little bit more decompression. But sometimes too, like these feelings come and as I'm learning, okay, I'm not going to buffer or numb myself with the chocolate chip cookie right now because that's not going to solve anything. I'm feeling whatever I'm feeling in that moment. Yeah, sitting with the emotion and letting it just work its way through. There's something to that. Maybe it takes five minutes. I don't know. I haven't necessarily sat with a timer. But point being, I think we can think it's this huge thing that we have to deal with when sometimes if we nip it in the bud and just address it rather than reaching for the whatever it is that's our numbing of choice, it actually can work its way through and we can move on in a more healthy way. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. Sometimes it's the littlest funny things, but I, I think my personality is very, it loves to achieve, right? And so if I can do a crossword puzzle or something, so it's a little different than I can easily feel hungry because I don't have enough stimulation. Oh, well, food sounds interesting, but I love to achieve. So something like a little word puzzle or something can make me feel so good and so happy. And it has to be, there are games that you get this impression that they're very random and you couldn't have one if you tried. That gets on my nerves. And so you have to learn these things, right? If it's just this random thing that it's generating for itself, then I'm out. But if it is something that actually using my brain and feeling like I accomplished something, you've got me. I'm so in because I had to work and then I can feel the happiness of it. But I think that goes back to what is the quality of my numbing. And, and of course, right, if I if that was getting in the way of the rest of my life, that would be another story. But when it serves the right purpose, and it serves the right purpose because back to that tooth thing, nobody likes to get their teeth fixed without the nothing. <laughs> I think you bring up a great point, right? Because I think sometimes too, and, and I'll just use eating again as an example, if I'm mindfully eating something and so maybe I have just experienced a really stressful thing or whatever it is, and I'm like, I'm actually going to sit down right now with a cup of hot tea and a biscotti. And I'm mindfully like just resetting myself. And I'm because again, food does bring pleasure, right? Our numbing, num, numbing of choice, whether it's a crossword puzzle, that can become an excessive thing if you're like checking out from your family and you just want to do like word puzzles all day or something like that. Or it could be something to get you reset. Same thing with the biscotti and the tea or whatever it is. And it's okay. After that 10 minutes of doing that and sitting with that, I'm then ready to go back and face whatever it was. But I just need that little break. So again, I think the mindfulness and the quality of the numbing that you're naming actually, it seems really helpful. Yes. 
what dose is most needed for the individual person? It sounds like you're a person who loves a great dopamine hit, Christina Kaiser. I'm a fan of serotonin. Thank you so much for just a very generative conversation. And now is the part of the podcast where we talk about what we are into. What are we into? Speaking of puzzles, I recently, I almost never scroll all the way down to the end of this kind of New York Times digest that I get. But at some point this summer, I started like clicking on their little games at the end. So they've had this Sudoku and I found the medium actually quite difficult at the beginning, but my brain is learning. And so I am getting faster at the medium level of Sudoku. And uh, I have almost felt a little guilty because I'm more excited about the games than I am about the news. And I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> I am supposed to be getting this so that I am in touch with what's going on. But yes, so the Sudoku has become something that gives me a little bit of joy because it feels like I had to work for it. And then I, when the brain makes all the right connections, then I feel like I'm growing. So I am into the Sudoku. I love it. I love it. I am into new pantry organizing containers and I was feeling grumpy. So we moved into our house and it was all like beige and we were too lazy to do anything with it. And so we are undergoing, we're doing repainting and refreshing our kitchen and whatnot. And so in that process, I've gotten some new, I'm like, you know what, we're going to just like redo the, the pantry. And we have chip bags and the, I don't know, the chips fall out. And we, I like to buy things in bulk at Costco. And so I love, I opened up my pantry now and it just looks so organized and we have little labels for things and it's symmetrical and it just, I love it. It's my work of art. So I am into kindred, kitchen pantry organizing bins. Amazon is very happy with me lately. Yes. And I've been getting joy out of watching you getting joy out of organization. I am similarly, we we're t talking about dose and I, I'm in the middle of helping with the remodel. I'm doing some of the painting. I'm doing all of the painting. There, there is prep work that needs to happen. And so you have to do this thing in stages. And so I've re recently talked about focus and setting short little goals of focus. And so in the prepping process, just setting these, these goals of getting this done in X amount of time. And uh, yeah, that's giving me some dopamine hits. I am into focused project of painting and prepping. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope to see you again next time. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, we invite you to stay connected by signing up for our Foundry Spiritual Center newsletter, where you can learn about even more programs and offerings. You'll find a link to subscribe in the show notes or visit us anytime at foundrysc.com. Thanks again for being with us. We hope you have a great week.